Hey there, and welcome back to South Park The Stick of Truth. My name is Pete, and today we complete the Detention Sentence main quest. This quest takes place at the South Park Elementary School, and our task is to get Craig out of detention. However, in the last episode we've learned that Mr. Mackey has already taken some precautions, and so inside of the school we're going to face locked doors and a bunch of hallway monitors. So, without any further ado, let's head inside. Excuse me, but school is out and no students allowed on the premises until tomorrow at 7.30 a.m. Alright, there is no way around to fight with this guy, so let's get it over with quickly. You are in reach of school on, must be punished! <laughs> now, in the last episode we learned the Dragon Shout ability, an ability that we can use both in and outside of combat. Now, additionally, we can also use it to enhance our attacks, for example, our ranged attack with the bow, and doing so deals enough damage here to take out our first enemy in one hit. Officer down! Officer down! Send back up! I repeat, officer down! All hallway monitors to the right hallway! Oh, god damn it! Here they come. They're gonna get you, Craig! You're not getting out of detention! I'll be out of here in 10 minutes. <laughs> Now, there is not too much to loot here, we can quickly grab the contents of a backpack, have a look at the trophy case here and then loot the hallway monitor. And here we can find a weapon patch and those work just like the armor patches. They can be equipped on our weapons, both melee and long range, adding various effects to that weapon and making it stronger in combat. We have now added gross damage to perfect attacks with the Mongolian bow and it won't take long until we see that in action. For now, we have taken care of everything here and the door to the right is the only one that we can go through, so let's continue. Over here we have the basement door, but we cannot access that at the moment. Instead, we face a few more enemies. Intruder alert! Initiate security protocol! However, as the game is kind enough to tell us here, we can take these ones out without a fight using our Dragon Shout. And this gives us the same amount of experience points that we would have gotten from a regular fight, but this way is of course much much faster and less dangerous, so normally it should be the preferred approach. By the way, we could have also shut down the speaker here for the same effect, I just wanted to let you know that. After looting everyone, we want to make sure to shoot down the ceiling grate here, which will drop Chin Pokemon number 13 for us to collect. You're not gonna get through this door! We're good. You might as well give up because I've hidden the key somewhere and you'll never find it in my office. Oh, damn it. Okay. So the cafeteria is locked right now, but at least we learned where the key is. It will take us a while though until we get it. Around the corner then we can use our environment to take out the next enemy. Shooting the telephone here will cause it to ring. The hallway monitor runs over to check it out and we can drop a pile of chairs on top of him. Now, this gives us a very important item that is essential for an achievement later on. And if you have not created a character with freckles, you now want to equip the ginger freckles. We will find a very specific enemy in a few minutes, and defeating him with those freckles equipped will be the only chance in the game to unlock the Daywalker achievement. By the way, just once again to show you, we could have also shot down the lamp here to take out the enemy. Jerk him! No! No! Get away from me, you freak! The protector of the brass key will never surrender! And for the first time in the game, we can now use our buddy ability. Those can be used to have our buddies interact with things in the game world, people included. Oh wow, boobies. Must have. Must touch. Boobies. Right, so we can see that Kenny's buddy ability is to charm people, which is also an ability he has in fights. Butters then, for example, has an entirely different ability, but we'll see that soon enough. Now, before we continue, we can quickly head into the janitor's office. Inside, though, only the desk drawer that has some loot for us. And back outside, we're then once again prompted to interact with the environment to avoid a fight. from my cold dead hands. Now avoiding the fight was not entirely correct, we still have one enemy left here, but he is now all on his own and if we hadn't shot down the billboard to take out the other two, this fight right here would definitely be a bit more challenging. In our case, however, the outcome is pretty much decided beforehand and we can use this fight to get a first look at Kenny in combat, specifically his furry friends ability. This ability is very useful against large groups of enemies as it hits everyone. Failing to execute it correctly though will result in Kenny's death. More officers down. We're taking heavy casualties. 
he's out here. Damn it, you hallway monitors need to stop playing around. He's got the brass key. He's some kind of dragonborn. Now look, this is detention time. Not time to play Dungeons and Dragons. And besides, he's never going to get inside here because to open the door, you need the gold key. And the only way to get the gold key is by getting the silver key. Okay, which even if he has the brass key, he still hasn't made it past the boss level. Okay. <laughs> Alright, we have now grabbed the brass key, one of three keys we will eventually need to unlock the cafeteria. And of course, we will acquire the remaining two keys in just a moment. By the way, I think I've mentioned this already in the last episode. I really, really like the design of this level. The option to take out enemies in multiple ways while still keeping the overall progress in the level fairly linear. That is something I really appreciate, because I'm actually a huge fan of linear quest lines, maybe with a few branches here and there. But generally, if things get too open-ended, I often feel that the overall quality of the quest suffers. He's here, guard the key! Alright, we have now entered a room with four enemies, but we don't have to fight a single one of them. First, we can light up the fireworks here to take out one enemy in the back. The key, the front lines. And then we can use Dragon Shout on the fire here to take out two more. And after his partner has been hit with fireworks, this guy here has moved dangerously close to a stack of books, which we can now send down on top of him to take him out as well. And with that, the room is cleared already, we can now help ourselves to a bit of loot and then take care of the kid in the back. Now, we once again have to use a buddy ability here, but we can also see that Kenny's charm ability is not what this kid needs right now. So, let's switch buddies and bring in Butters in exchange for Kenny. And now we can use Butters' healing ability to continue. Alright, now we have obtained the silver key and that means only one more key remains and we will find that one in Mr. Mackey's office. I sure hope the gold key is in there or else the quest for the silver key has been all for nothing. Be careful, douchebag. This is Mackey's lair. One wrong step and we could end up in detention. Very important inside of this office here, it looks like there are three containers to loot, but there are actually four of them. The fourth one is hidden behind Mr. Mackey's desk, and it should not be missed as it gives a face paint, a potion and the patch. The gold key. No human has ever laid hands on it before. Let's hope it holds the power to unlock the cafeteria door. Alright, and now that we have all three keys, we are ready for the final challenge. Before we get into that, however, we want to make sure to consume a mana potion. This will increase our mana reserves, and we'll need some of those in the upcoming fight. That's far enough, intruder! Where's your hall pass? No hall pass? Then it's time to write you a referral. Oh yeah, that's the boss. Good luck fighting the boss, okay? You still think this is a game, young man? Deadly Forth is authorized. Alright, we have our second boss fight of this playthrough and the first one in the main quest line, as we're now fighting the hallway monitor boss. Since it takes a while to take him down, we want to focus on his minions first, and for the meantime, we will disable him with a well-timed jujitsu. That also gives us perfect attack number 100, finally unlocking the weapon proficiency achievement. Now, one possible strategy for this fight is to exchange bodies again before combat starts, as Kenny's fairy friend's ability is definitely very useful here. Apart from that, however, I don't think Kenny has that much to offer in the fight, and that is why I simply stuck to Butters. We can now also use our upgraded Sling of David ability for the first time, which now not only inflicts the attack down and pissed off status effects, but also hits an additional random target. And with only two enemies left, there are not that many options to choose from. And so it's now two against one, but we want to make sure to not take out the hallway monitor boss this turn. The reason for that is that on his next turn, he will very likely start channeling an ability. And we want to interrupt that channeling with our Dragon Shout ability, as that will count towards the rebuttal achievement. To get that achievement, we need to interrupt five channel attacks with our abilities. And as you can see, we can get number one of five right here. Hear of 
Use your power on him. Hurry. All right, so here it is. He has started channeling his attack, and we can now spend 40 mana to use Dragon Shout on him, which will interrupt the channeling and get us one step closer to the achievement. And by the way, it also defeats our enemy, and doing so with Freckles equipped unlocks the Daywalker achievement. Right from his body, we can now loot the Hall Monitor lock key, and that gives us access to the locker on the left here. Inside, we can find the Mace of Restoration, and compared to the Sickle Sword of the Faithful, that weapon is actually a bit better, so let's equip it and also put a weapon patch on it, and a 10% damage increase on perfect attacks, that seems like a straightforward but still rather useful upgrade. And now I think it's time to finally get Crack out of detention. Yay! Damn you, Crack! Thanks for busting me out, kid. Who are you? What's your name? Oh well, I'm heading to Koopa Keep. See you there, I guess. Alright, and with that, the Detention Sentence quest is completed, and we are rewarded with a level up to level 5. So we have another ability point to spend, and we will use that to max out the upgrades on our Sling of David. That final upgrade is not immensely useful, but it plays to the strength of the Jew class, and much more important than that, it gives us the Mastery Achievement, an achievement that is unlocked for getting all the available upgrades for one of our abilities. By the way, now that we're on level 5, we've also unlocked the Circumcise ability, but we'll talk a bit more about that when we use it in combat for the first time. There's a rumor the girls have a secret base, but I've never seen it. Now our next task is to go back to Koopa Keep, but before we do that, let's quickly fight these two elves here for some loot and experience points. Right, that was quick and easy, the elves did not get a single attack in, and we have earned 28 experience points and a bit of loot. And now that we don't really have anything else to do, let's fast travel back to Koopa Keep and see how the storyline continues. Gentlemen, thanks to the new kid, our entire army is assembled. It is my belief that the new kid deserves to rank up in level. To honor his efforts, he will no longer be called Douchebag. New kid, I hereby dub thee Sir Douchebag. Congratulations. But now it is time for us to take back that which is rightfully ours. A carrier raven has come with news that the Stick of Truth has not yet been taken to the Elven Forest. It is in the possession of the Bard. The Bard? Oh, oh god, not the Bard! The Bard is a level 10 drow elf who can use magic to enchant and destroy his enemies. Are you ready to continue your training? Then make haste to the training grounds. Okay, now before we go over to the training grounds, we want to quickly go into the inventory, as with our increase in rank, we have earned a few more items. We have been given the Holy Staff, which is a higher level version of the Jewish Staff, but in my opinion still not quite as powerful as the Maze of Restoration. We have also received the Holy Yarmulk, I believe it's pronounced. Basically, once again, a slight upgrade over the standard Jew headgear, but also, once again, it's debatable whether or not this one is more useful than the Druid Crown. The Holy Robes have been upgraded as well, and here I think it's a bit of a toss-up with the Druid Robes, but we'll leave them equipped for now. Last but not least, the level 3 Holy Ring, and the plus 20 Holy Damage on Perfect Attack, that is actually quite useful, even though we would lose the automatic defense up at the start of combat from the Druid Gloves. Alright, enough equipment talk, I will have a closer look at that in between episodes. For now, let's head to the training grounds and see what Cartman wants to teach us. I'm going to teach you how to use a ranged magic attack. It's not easy, but being able to cup a spell from a distance can save you in battle. Allow me to demonstrate. Yeah! Let me show you one more time. Watch closely. Yeah! You see how it works? Now you try. Way back from where you're standing. Cup the magic and throw it at your opponent. Yes, yes! But now let us see how you fare against a real opponent. Hey, Malkinson! Malkinson, could you come help us with something? <laughs> Shh, don't have to touch, it's gonna be sweet. Yes? Oh, uh, hey, Scott, could you, um, spar with Douchebag real quick? He's gonna try a new move. I'm guys! Now, Douchebag, come and spell!
Go back to your post. Thank you. <laughs> Use it wisely in battle, douchebag. And never on a man's boss. If the carrier ravens are correct, the bard is hiding out at the inn of the giggling donkey. We must find him before he's able to take the stick back to the oven forest. Let us find the bard and bring him to justice! Make haste to the giggling donkey! Alright, here we are, and with that we have completed the Call the Banners main quest. We have recruited Tweak, Token and Craig, and our next challenge is already laid out for us. So in the next episode we will take on the Bard, in what promises to be another very interesting episode in our fight for the Stick of Truth. Until then, as always, leave a thumbs up if you like this episode. If you want to support the channel and stay up to date, then feel free to subscribe. And of course, thank you all for watching, and I'll see you next time. Cheers.